out of the snow, out of the rain. And this tent is very, this is what I was just speaking about where it's removable. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's adventure is kind of a yesterday's or other channel adventure, I should say. Um, I'm out camping right now on my other channel and I wanted to jump in here. I haven't filmed here in a little while because I've been working on some projects behind the scenes, but I do have something I want to share with you and that is a new tent. So let's go have a look at it. All right, so it is an extremely bright and beautiful day out here today. Jumping inside of this beautiful camouflage style hot tent. We got Boomer over there next to the wood stove. We've got a nice little fire going on in there. And this tent is very, very warm. Just finishing up a cup of coffee, as you guys can see down there. And I'm just gonna give you guys a little tour of this tent. As you guys can see, I've got my sleeping pad and sleeping bag positioned widthwise on the tent. So I'm, I sleep lengthwise, but I chose to sleep widthwise last night. Massive amount of headroom up here. And this pole structure is very nice as well as the stove jack and stove placement. So a little bit more information on this tent for you. Okay, so this tent is very similar to a tent that I used a number of years ago with a company that I'm not gonna mention the name. If you guys have been on this channel or are familiar with Lone Wolf, you guys will know what I'm talking about. This tent very closely resembles that. And I'm very happy to have it back. No, it is not from that company. This tent is from a company called Hill Zero. I have three tents, three tents from them. I have another one that's camouflage, a freestanding backpacking tent. I have a non-freestanding two-person, uh, very lightweight tent with carbon fiber poles. And now I've got this in camouflage as well. So I have one hot tent and two lightweight tents from that company. It's called Hill Zero. They've come up with their own camouflage. Very, very cool. It is absolutely high quality. Very, very high quality. This tent right now is just an outer, doesn't have an inner, but it does come with a stove jack already fitted in it, ready to run a hot tent wood stove. So with this angle here, with the light coming through the tent, you guys can make out that camouflage pattern. It's almost like a tiger stripe. And when I say they come up with their own camo, you'll notice right there stamped in that black is the company name, Hill Zero. And it's also way down here, printed, Hill Zero. And up here, you guys can see their badge on what their logo looks like. Very high quality tent manufacturer. This particular tent is a non-freestanding. As you guys can see right here, there is a little trifecta of guy lines. And it all comes to this ring, which self positions so it can go sideways. It's always gonna land directly in the middle to pull. And that comes all the way back to the ground, way down there to be guyed out to give this tent load of structure. All the guy out points down on the ground are very, very high quality webbing. They also have adjustable straps as you guys can see right there. So it could be taut or loosened up. The entire tent has a snow skirt all the way around, which you can lay a little bit of debris or snow on top of in the winter time. You can also fold it up and prop it up with a stick if you want a little bit more ventilation inside of the tent. This tent is, like I said, a non-freestanding tent. However, it does have a metal pole system. So these are four individual poles that collapse in the center. So this pole being the longest one, they're shot corded, they do collapse. There's one pole, two pole, three pole, four pole, and a plastic hub system. That pole just goes down to the ground. These three poles actually click into the tent very securely, keeping that spread and taut and giving a really nice area to hang things. So you guys will notice I've got a lantern hung over there. I could attach a piece of string to that very top pole and run a ridge line across the tent to the other side and make a, a clothesline. Anything you, you really need to do, hang clothing, dry things out in the wintertime. Very, very nice. The opposite side is a matching door. So down by the foot end, there's a very long zipper and another very long zipper. And that opens up just like this front door. The bonus with this is those doors 
can literally be opened up and pitched out like a tarp. You get two more poles or two sticks on an angle and you can have an awning outside on both sides or one side. So you can literally be inside of the tent and join the wood stove underneath of a tarp out of the snow, out of the rain and enjoy the inside heat and the outside elements at the same time without having to pitch a tarp over the tent, which I think is really nice. Over here, you guys can see a little look at the stove jack. They've got a nice, generous rain flap going around this. It is Velcro, has a full U-shaped zip all the way around, a nice little toggle to keep it out of the way. Again, we got some more of the Hill Zero branding, identical guy line system on that side. And here you guys can kind of make out the little skeleton shape here of those poles and that plastic hub really helps kick that side out. So that is rigid. That's not gonna get blown in from the wind. That is all rigid from a pole, which I think is an excellent idea and a great way to help mitigate some sag when the tent's heavy with snow and a little bit of moisture. So give me guys another little walk through here. Spin around the tent. I believe they're advertising this tent as a three person tent, but I think if you're sleeping in there without a wood stove, I mean, you guys can see right there, that's one. I can move all the way over to that pole and go one, two, three, four, maybe even five. Easily. With a wood stove, I would say three people maximum. And that's going to be a very tight fit. Two people, absolutely perfect. One person, such as right now, an absolute palace. So just coming into the bag here to the tent, you guys can see it is the Hill Zero Scarecrow M. I don't know if that's medium or what it is, but it is called the Scarecrow from Hill Zero. Got a little bit of directions here and what it comes with. So I'm just gonna read some of these specs out to you guys because it's really hard to pick up on camera. If you guys can read that, go ahead and press pause and read along. The dimensions, the length are 165 inches. The height is 67 inches. The width is 102 inches. The weight 3.1 kilograms or 6.8 pounds. The material is 20 denier nylon. 66 one-sided silicone coating, one-sided PU 2500 millimeter, UPF 50, 210D blended reinforcement patches for added strength, YKK zippers, nylon core spun thread, uh, waterproof tape, waterproof rating is 2500 millimeters. It comes with all the pegs, the guy lines, the tent, everything you need to get started. And it is absolutely very, very high quality. So my personal thoughts on the Hill Zero Scarecrow, two thumbs up. I give you two thumbs up, but I'm holding the camera. Um, so a couple things with this, I'm just looking at the tent right now. One thing that would be really nice would be to have a connecting pole from one peak to the other peak. Remember inside when I was talking about hanging a, a line from one side to the other to make a ridge line? It would be nice if there was an optional pole to click to make a solid ridge line across the top. <clears throat> the reason why I mention that is it is a non-freestanding tent and you've got to get it pitched in the ground, typically in the winter time, hot tent. Uh, non-freestanding tents are very, very difficult in certain areas of rock, ice, frozen ground. It can be difficult. So it kind of limits the usage, where you can use it, how you can pitch it, how quickly it is to pitch, how frustrating it might be to pitch. So having a pole that can connect the two tops and maybe a little pocket sleeve on the ground where that pole can nestle into, because right now it just nestles in the ground. If they could have a strap system with like a little kind of pole carrier, like a little pole cup where that can sit in, then it would turn into a semi freestanding shelter, making it a lot easier to set up. Another thing I've noticed is there's no ventilation in this tent no ventilation kickstand vents at all, which is usually okay in a tent like this. It's not a sealed up tent. So there's no floor, there's no like inner mesh or anything like that. Basically you could just open the tent door and have all the air come in. You can pitch the doors open and let a lot of air flow in as well. But keep in mind this tent ideally is more so geared around like bushcraft, day camping, having it pitched open with the awning. So you you're in and out, like I was just mentioning. There's room for improvement, but I mean, for what this tent offers, absolutely incredible. It's big, coming in at 6.8 pounds with all the poles, and it is a big tent. Pitching a one-person backpacking tent inside of there 
leave the rain fly home makes this a very good tent for indoor outdoor living in the summertime so you can stay out of the bugs in the winter time i don't really feel i need it you can actually even almost hang a hammock inside of here if you pitch the side doors open you could hang a hammock right through there so that's an interesting thing i may do something with that in the future um a lot of pros to this tent, not a whole lot of cons. I think they did a really great job in where they were kind of marketing it. Uh, one thing I do want to show you though, there is a strap that you can actually take off. And I find that very useful because often tents that have those ground straps you could trip on, this one's actually removable. All right, so coming into the tent, first of all, before I go down to the ground and show you, what I was talking about the connecting pole is if they had a pole that connected at that point to that point. So basically a long pole that would run inside as a ridge line. And then if they took one of these ground straps, this is what I was just speaking about where it's removable, we can actually unclick this. And what this does is sets the, the tension and the length of the tent when you're pegging it out. So then you pull it really nice and tight and that tells you exactly where the pegs should go. It is removable once you have the tent set up because after that it's really not usable, but it would be nice if they had one of these running from this corner here all the way to that corner there and basically that pole back there would land in the middle and that would be a kind of like a like a little cup where it can hold the pole in the ground because right now it's actually just resting on the ground if you're camping in snow and ice that spot right there might not be the same height as that spot which is going to put the tent off kilter so it'd be nice to have something to lock those poles in the ground for setting it up. Like I said, generating a, a semi-freestanding tent, which would be really nice. I'm not a huge fan of non-freestanding tents in the winter time when running a wood stove, just because if you do lose one of these pegs, it is a critical piece. Now this particular tent, they kind of catch that in that if a peg falls out, that structure is still solid with the poles. So it really keeps the tent material away from the, the stove, making it a lot safer than other tents on the market. So a couple pieces there for improvement, but all in all, the Hill Zero Scarecrow, absolute incredible tent. So that's pretty much it. Uh, it's very, very big tent. I, I'm interested in what you guys think, honestly. Hill Zero sent me a two person backpacking tent. That was my very first tent from them. And I was blown away by the quality. When this tent showed up, I had no idea they were even sending it. When this showed up, I didn't know what to think. So the, the backstory from a company that I used to cooperate with, I'm not gonna mention the name because it's not worth my time, uh, but I took their tent, which was very similar to this. It was a non-hot tent. And I cut a hole in it, ran it through my sewing machine, designed a little bit of a stove jack area, put it together and actually turned it in to a hot tent. I do this very often with a lot of tents from different companies and manufacturers. They usually contact me, we partner up and go from there. I did that with that tent and I went out and camped in it in this exact same location. And I had a great time. It uh, honestly, I, I had fun. Shortly after that, I decided I'm no longer gonna help that company out. And what did they do? They made a production version with the stove jack, turned it into a hot tent, which is fine, whatever. I mean, it's no brainer, anybody could do that. But I lost that shelter out of my own pride because I didn't want to use it and help represent their company. This company came out and made almost, almost, they've improved a lot, but a very similar tent with the stove jack, the way I modified the first one about five years ago and it's camouflage. So I'm super happy with that. Very, very stoked. Um, very happy with this. So let me know what you guys think about the Hill Zero Scarecrow. I'm looking at it right now and it's just got such a neat little stance. Uh, my, my brain's playing around with a lot of ideas with this thing. It's pretty cool. It's great for overlanding too. If you pitch this next to a Jeep or a truck, make like a little a canteen hut, a uh, little lounging area with the wood stove. Uh, very, very cool. So let me know what you guys think about this tent. I will be using it in uh, future episodes. I do have other tents from Hill Zero, like I was saying. So if you're interested in seeing more about those tents in this kind of fashion, discussing it, talking about it, pros and cons, let me know. And uh, I do have a few things lined up here on this channel. So stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one.